morning everybody and um, welcome to morning prayer on Thursday morning um, the 8th of October uh, slightly better weather which is good um, lots of funerals this week so do keep Sally and I in your prayers as we um, minister to several families this week I think there are five funerals this week um, who have lost their loved ones um, so morning prayer today yep yeah, if you want to follow the readings and um, I recommend you do read the readings today because we have two readings of um, great contrast um, so do read them read them both I won't read them both because they're both quite long actually I'll read the New Testament as usual um, but do try and catch the um, the Old Testament as well if you uh, want to follow the psalm for this morning, it's Psalm 78, and it's verses 1 to 39, a long, uh, long psalm this morning. So 78, 1 to 39. The Old Testament reading is taken from 2 Kings, and it's chapter 1, verses 2 to 17. So 2 Kings, 1, 2 to 17. And when we get there, and I shall read this, uh, it's continuing the book of Acts. We're coming towards the end of the book of Acts now, very close to the end. Chapter 24, verses 1 to 23. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our usual Thursday canticle. I've just lost. Sorry. So the Thursday canticle. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I've called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so I will just turn off the noises that uh, are interrupting us and uh, read from the book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 1 to 23. Five days later, the high priest and Ananias came down with some elders and an attorney, a certain Tertullus, and they reported their case against Paul to the governor. When Paul had been summoned, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Your Excellency, because of you we have long enjoyed peace, and reforms have been made for this people because of your foresight. We welcome this in every way, and everywhere with utmost gratitude. But to detain you no further, I beg you to hear us briefly with your customary graciousness. We have, in fact, found this man a pestilent fellow, an agitator among the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. He even tried to profane the temple, and by so we seized him. By examining him yourself, you will be able to learn from him concerning everything of which we accuse him. The Jews also joined in the charge by asserting all of this was true. 
When the governor motioned to him to speak, Paul replied. I cheerfully make my defence, knowing that for many years you have been a judge over this nation. As you can find out, it is not more than twelve days since I went up to worship in Jerusalem. They did not, my, did not find me disrupting with anyone in the temple or stirring up a crowd either in the synagogues or throughout the city. Neither can they prove to you the charge that they now bring against me. But this I admit to you that according to the way, which they call a sect, I worship the God of our ancestors, believing everything laid down according to the law or written in the prophets. I have a hope in God, a hope that they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the outright unrighteous. Therefore, I do my best always to have a clear conscience towards God and all people. Now, after some years, I came to bring arms to my nation and to offer sacrifices. While I was doing this, they found me in the temple, completing the rite of purification without any crowd or disturbance. But there were some Jews from Asia. They ought to be here before you to make an accusation if they have anything against me. Or let these men here tell what crime they have found when I stood before the council, unless it was this one sentence that I called out while standing before them. It is about the resurrection of the dead that I am on trial before you today. But Felix, who was rather well informed about the way, adjourned the hearing with the comment, when Lysias the tribune comes down, I will decide your case. Then he ordered the centurion to keep him in custody, but to let him have some liberty and not prevent any of his friends from taking care of his needs. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So um, the, the two readings this morning, I'll just um, briefly tell you about the, the king's two kings reading, Ahaziah, um, a king of the time, had um, had a horrible accident. He had he'd fallen um, from a height and was badly injured. And um, he sent messengers um, to go and talk to the um, prophets of Baal um, about whether he was going to live or not. Um, but they were intercepted by Elijah, who um, says, no, sorry, mate, you're going to die. Um, <laughs> you, um, why are you going to Baal? Um, what help is he? He's not a real god. Um, and in the end, the king does die um, of his injuries, which is rather horrible. Um, and then we come to the story in Acts, um, where Paul is imprisoned um, for speaking about the resurrection. Um, and this is because the Jews didn't believe in a, in a resurrection of the body and, a, and an afterlife um, in the way that we as Christians do and the way that um, Christians who are yet to be called Christians, you'll notice we're still followers of the way, um, are, are preaching and Paul is preaching. So we have this great contrast between this king in the Old Testament who is an unbeliever, who um, looks to other gods uh, to help answer his questions and to help him. And Paul, um, a leader of the way of this new Christian faith, who has absolute faith in what he's saying and, and will not change what he's um, preaching. Although, as he was saying in, in Jerusalem, he wasn't actually preaching. He was just um, letting people know, but he has been preaching for years. And he actually stays in prison as, as we continue to read Acts. Um, I don't know whether we'll still be in it by next Thursday. We might just have moved on. Um, but he's in prison for years, two years after this um, episode that we read about this morning. And then follows the great journey to um, 
to Rome um, with a shipwreck and, and all of that, if you remember your story in Acts, or if you don't, read on. But here we are with these, these two contrasts. The king, wealthy, um, has everything, palaces, staff, everything, but has a horrible accident and nothing to um, hope for, 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 for the future. Whether he dies or not, that's the end for him. Um, and Paul, who is so convinced of his faith and um, of the hope of a life everlasting, that he will remain in prison for two years and will not change what he's saying. And it's a bit like when we were talking about last week about, you know, it, many people will, will say, you know, it's the usual thing, Jesus, yeah, Jesus existed, but he was just a great teacher. Um, or that he didn't exist at all, of course. Um, but these disciples, Paul and all the others, they lay down their lives. So convinced are they that it is true that the Messiah has come. And, you know, you wouldn't, if it was a made up story, if you didn't know it to be true, you, um, you wouldn't lay your life down, would you? Um, and to have that faith in there is something more. Sorry, my cat has just decided to join in morning prayer this morning. Um, probably wanting some more food. Um, the Vicarage cats are very faithful with their morning prayer and their services. Are we? Are we? Do we? Do we have that faith? Would you lay your life down? I know we've asked this and thought about this before. Um, but there's this, this stark contrast this morning of these two readings. The king that has everything and Paul who has nothing and gives up his life um, and remains poor but knowing that he is richer than anything. Now a lesson for this world we are so sidelined aren't we by um, things and having things and the comfort and, and we are you know look we are comfortable in this this country aren't we we're very lucky and very blessed for all that we have but that's not what's important and and i think this pandemic has taught us that hasn't it that um the importance of people and our faith so come back to church it's open um we're going to try and start um, a bible study soon on a on a wednesday perhaps instead of the um or as well as the coffee morning as part of the coffee morning and um, let's use this time to really strengthen ourselves in our faith and build up um, the kingdom in our communities let's do it right pussycat we're going to pray are you going to be quiet while we pray you probably can't hear him but he is quite loud in his purring So let's pray. Father God, we pray for your world. For your world starved of compassion and forgiveness. Father, hear our prayer and grant us your spirit. We pray for your church, whose witness is often weakened by disunity is often weakened by war, where the people, our Christian brothers and sisters, are suffering from persecution. The church that has been weakened in our benefice by this pandemic. We pray for your church around the world for Christian people everywhere, that we would put our faith above all else so that we may be strengthened to 
carry on and minister to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in situations of violence, hostility and racial prejudice. We pray for our leaders and for peace and justice between nations. We pray particularly in those very many places around the world where our brothers and sisters are being persecuted and killed. Praying particularly for our brothers and sisters in Nagorno-Karabakh where war has broken out. In northern Nigeria, in Sudan and South Sudan. For whole waves across Africa where Christians are being persecuted and killed. We pray for all people, innocent sufferers of other countries' arguments and power and oppression. We pray and give thanks, Lord, for all who try to bring peace and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the lonely, the isolated, the rejected, the long-term unemployed. We pray for all who are suffering economically from this pandemic particularly those in our own communities and those whom we know. And we pray for all burdened by worry, ill health or pain. Praying for those very many on our prayer lists. Those we hold dear in our own hearts and minds. We pray that they will know the relief and healing through those who care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have died, especially those for whom funerals are taking place this week. We pray for their loved ones left behind, that comfort and hope will lessen their sorrows. And we remember with joy your unfailing love and pray that we may show our thanks not only with our lips but also in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for this week Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless you. I hope you... Have a, a good week. Uh, it's goodbye from me and uh, goodbye from Bing. See you next week. Bless you. Bye bye.